Audience, welcome to Viewpoint from Overseas, October 6, 2019. We are fortunate again today to have Dr. Adil Najam with us on Skype from Boston. And in the studio here we have uh, uh, Ms. Bazam Saab. Ms. Bazam, I believe it's at Ms. Bazam at, on Twitter. Yes. And uh, yours faithfully, Sabaz Ashraf. I write under at iFaqeez either on Facebook or Twitter. And uh, so where do we start this week, uh, Dr. Saab, uh, Dr. Saiban, in fact? Uh, we have some very interesting times uh, that we are living through. We've dis discussed that previously. Finally, America is starting to get into these uh, situations. The, uh, we have some Persian proverbs that have been very much part of our culture. And the one going through my head uh, this week or this month or two months has been the old Gurba Kushtan Roze Awal, which loosely translates into a very politically incorrect uh, kill the cat on the first day. But the issue that comes to mind is there's a lot of these things that have been evolving over a long time. We can talk about, oh, today it's a problem, but these th a lot of these things could have been prevented. I mean, I look at Donald Trump and this whole latest controversy we have uh, of him talking to Ukraine and asking for favors. And then he goes on TV and says about China, exactly the same thing he said about Russia during his election. Russia, if you're listening, help me. So how do you see this, Dr. Saab? I mean, a lot of these things, and then the discussion we are having, either in the US or in Pakistan even is, oh, Modi, 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 RSS, 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 when the issues of that we have in Kashmir or even in Indian society and some of them in Pakistani society have been with us all along. I mean, the issue of uh, Muslim discrimination in India did not start uh, with the Modi government. I remember 1988, you know, I've been going in and out of India for most of my life, but right about the early 90s, I mean, the BJP hadn't taken power. We were already seeing people having difficulty finding apartments in different parts of Bombay or Lucknow or Delhi. So as a political scientist, which I believe you are, sir, you've, you've studied these things. Where do you see the world being and specifically the countries we focus on? And I'm going to add Nigeria to that list because that's where my heart also lies. But the US, Pakistan, India, what's going on here? Uh, Sabat, the things that you have raised are actually the hottest debate in the uh, scholarship on foreign affairs. So if you look at the Journal of Foreign Affairs newest issue that just came, its cover story is exactly about this, as has been every cover story. And the debate that the, you you localized it to the few countries that, that you have a particular interest in. But um, I could I could expand that. So you can do Duterte and Definitely. Indians. You can do uh, Brazil. Uh, you can do uh, Italy, Hungary. Hungary. You can do Poland. You can do even the Scandinavian countries. You just close your eyes and throw a dart at the world. <laughs> and the debate really is the debate really is uh, in how you put it. The way you put it, you know, with the with the Persian problem, it's either that all of this has been with us forever, or something totally new is happening. I am on the side of this debate and have written recently about it that it is something new. Except if you really want to see what this is about, then you have to go back, in my view, I have made this claim in, 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 in a few articles, then you have to go back to the turn of the last century. Just about exactly 100 years ago, you have to go back to 1912, 1913, not 1940. But hmm. the type of turmoil we are seeing, we are seeing, in my view, a very massive change in the global polity. Now, at that point, it was coming as as monarchies covered and as as uh, as a established order of colonialism uh, began to crumble. It seems it is happening now, not with the crumbling of democracy, but the coming of age of democracy at a point when we are also seeing some of its very uh, more more much more difficult facets, such as, for example, populism, such as, for example, nationalism. Now, one can always say that these things are not new. But the magnitude of what we are seeing and the manifestation of what we are seeing, I have claimed, is new. That you are exactly right. That that uh, that uh, that uh, that Muslims uh, being targeted in India is not new. 
But the fact that they could go to an extent where major leaders of the ruling party would call Gandhi a traitor and Gandhi's killer, uh, murderer, a hero, and not only get away with it, but also know that there was a large enough populist base where in which they would be strengthened is new. The, uh, and, and I'm just picking on one country, but this is everywhere. So, and, and in fact, it is not even left or right. My argument has been that the old left and right is no longer valid. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether Mr. Modi is right or left. Uh, we think of him as right simply because on religious issues he's there. Right? But, 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 but this goes again for Mr. Trump. I don't know whether he's right, left, center, where. Uh, he's all over the place. And that is because our established systems of understanding politics across the world are changing. Now, they are changing for, for reasons that you and Dr. Misba are actually much more familiar and responsible for than me. And that is technology. A lot of this has got to do with technology, just as it had a lot to do with technology in 1930, 1912. And what I mean by that is that in terms of democracy, people's ability to influence politics, people's tools of influence in politics have changed so drastically that the structures of our politics, national and global, was being done, are fundamentally under question. And this you see everywhere, in good ways, in bad ways. So in my field, one of the areas I work in, climate change, the biggest phenomena is this young, uh, young teenager, Greta, from Scandinavia, who has totally sort of shaken the system. Some people do not like her. A lot of people, including me, thinks that think that she's she's a breath of fresh air. But what she is doing in terms of the politics, the global politics of climate change, was un, unimaginable. Now we have again seen this. If you want to connect the dots, then then let's look at the old dots of the last ten years across the world. So what we saw, for example, with the uh, so-called Arab Spring, what we saw with the colored revolutions across across Europe. Uh, what we saw with this rise of a particular type of nationalist leader, uh, where they are populist and nationalist and they are authoritarian. They are authoritarian not because, like, uh, Hari, uh, not like Zimbabwe, where Mugabe became authoritarian as he grew into power. Not like that. They are authoritarian because there is a demand for authoritarians by the populace. Mr. Modi is one of the most popular leaders ever to have come across India, certainly in the post-Nehru time. So, again, I keep picking on, on, on India, but it's not just India. I think if you try to understand Mr. Imran Khan in Pakistan, a lot of that is also a populist streak. Now, that doesn't mean there's an equation between Imran and Modi. They're very different. But what is common is that there is a politics of populism, there's a politics of nationalism, there's a politics of authoritarian. Not authoritarian, it's not authoritarian, it's a strong man politics. People are demanding, voters are demanding a strong man politics. And you see that in how Mr. Trump is reacting to the whole issue of, uh, of the charges against him. He's not trying to defend them as much as sort of demonstrating his strength. You can see Mr. Putin in Russia. You can see Mr. Xi in, in China. So I've thrown this whole big, I've, I've taken your big question and made it bigger. But I do think it is a bigger question, and it is not one that can be understood country by country. It has to be understood global at a time. No, so, but w once we once get we into understanding the global uh, dynamics of it, right, then we can, and, and I, I believe very strongly, and I think you're saying this, that it is only after understanding the dynamics of it that we can bring it home to each country and each locale and try to understand either how to engage with it, where we think pushback is needed, how to push back. And even if one agrees, for example, with Greta Thunberg, even if you, or Imran Khan, if you, even if you agree with the direction of it, there are sometimes where we can either understand that there are excesses built into it, right? There might be like, you know, Mao's revolution or, Stal or uh, Stalin's original, rev uh, not Stalin, Lenin's revolution, where they were trying to fix some of the excesses of the old system. But then they went, and I, at least my humble opinion is that they went to the excess in the other extreme, right? So do we have to watch out with that? And it's very interesting that you draw the parallel between Greta and Modi and Imran and Trump and uh, frankly, I, I'm hard pushed to find anything 
on on the other side, like Greta, that we can place. I mean, we have the and you say populist and strongman. I've been using the the phrase demagogue or you know because populist demagogue and I I hate to say it, but narcissistic demagogue seems to be the model going around. Okay, they, they don't. They're not all demagogues. They're not all narcissists. I do think strongman yeah. is also. They're also not all 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 all, all strongmen. Though most of them are. But the, one of the things, again, I go back to the 19, early 1900s. Right? But if you look right before the First World War, there isn't an ideological divide between Germany and Britain. Yeah. Right? For, yeah. For, for, for God's sake, they're the same family. They're cousins. Mm. Right? And they're, yeah. they're monarchies, they're cousins, yes. they're constitutional monarchies, it's evolving a certain way. We, yeah. may live to, we may live to remember the Cold War and the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because all three of us grew up in the Cold War, we think that's normal politics. It isn't. No, I, mean, I don't agree with that. Small little blip in time, you know, it's 50, 60, 70 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it was divided by ideology. That has not been so. I would argue that the world is no longer divided by ideology. I, I right. don't see the div ideological division even between Mr. Putin and Mr. Trump. Why does Mr. Trump move so seamlessly between North Korea and Russia and China and Pakistan and India. You know, he's buddies with Iran, he's buddies with, with Modi, uh, he's buddies with uh, the North Putin, Koreans, yeah. he's buddies with uh, Putin. In the old mind, you say here, the world was neatly divided between us and them, hmm. according to our theology. That is no longer so. Let me give you an even more pressing, uh, interesting example. In many ways, the politics that I'm talking about that brought Mr. Obama to light is exactly the same that brought Mr. Trump to life. Now, what is going to happen is supporters of both are going to hate me for saying this. But the parallel between Mr. Obama in the US and Mr. Trudeau in uh, Canada, Canada, in my writings, I've been right. bringing out. What is the parallel between, you know, nice Mr. Trudeau and nasty mm -hmm. Mr. Trump? The parallel is the same. All of them have come essentially on the argument of the politics, or what I call the politics of anti politics. Right. Right. What does yeah. that mean? The politics of anti-politics is essentially people saying, I am not a politician. Right? And you and I are to blame for it. We mm -hmm. have made politics such a dirty word that there is a demand out there. As soon as someone says, I am not a politician, they become interested. Now, a lot of this has to do with politicians across the last 60, 70 years. But what was Mr. Trump's, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Obama's winning winning argument? Right? Change. 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 What was Mr. Trump's winning argument? Change. Change. What was Mr. Uh, Trudeau's winning argument? Change. Change. I am not like them. Now, one called it the swamp, the other called it hope, but all across it, Imran Khan, Mr. Modi. Right? What is common? So in my argument, in my writing, I've been arguing that what is common here is this politics of, uh, of unpolitics, where there is a demand for a new, for this change. Right? It doesn't matter what the change is. And that is creating this global moment that will in fact bring about a change. And might already have brought about a change in the nature of global international politics through what is happening in these and you know throw in Brexit into the mix. <laughs> and so you yeah. have anything in the world and you see exactly in I see at least similar dynamics of a transition in the essential structures of how we understood politics. We understood politics as left and right. We understood it as ideology. We understood as democratic, undemocratic. And all of those uh, schemata are, are, are crumbling in front of us. So I've actually been thinking, and the, the phrase of, uh, that I've been going through my head for a while is a three-cornered fight. Each of these fights is at least three-cornered, always has been. I mean, the Cold War, like you said, was actually an exception in where world history where the two strong poles kind of pulled everyone to one side or the other. But so, uh, Ms. Azam Sahib, you've been sitting here quietly and help us bring this home to today. I mean, we've been talking at a very high level. Can you bring us home to what's happening in the news today in the US, in Pakistan, in India? Wider, uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, actually, I would, uh, for you, with your permission, I would like to a little bit ask some question to Dr. Saab on the same it. issue you guys were discussing. It's a very interesting discussion, and fortunately, this type of discussion, I rarely see it happening. I mean, current affair is a good thing to discuss, but the thing is that these things are very important that 
people should know that what is happening around us sir you say that the politics of change was there right quote and quote and the politics of non politics is there i agreed i mean no doubt about it everybody as you mentioned that mentioned that i am not like a washington politician i am not like a typical dynastic politics in pakistan you know uh, stuff like that now people have these people have them some of them are successful some of them are not successful i mean like you mentioned that uh, mr modi is uh, one of the most uh, popular uh, populist if you will uh, however imran khan probably is losing his uh, rhetoric of change uh, same way mr trump all the troubles going on with uh, him now how you see the future is coming up with it i mean is it going to stay there any time anybody says i am not a politician and people will be just blindly going to it because the way i see it why uh, let's take a specific example of pakistan suppose why people voted mr imran khan well of course there are a lot of uh, question on the uh, election rigging and all but uh, besides the point uh, there, there was a some kind of wave of him was that that he is never tested and other people with their dynasties they will be always in power for at least for long time in power although it's not true entirely now uh what will happen next is it going to Uh, follow this trend and now this uh, one of your comment i am re- i am saying it here which you made it when you were talking to ajaz heather when mr trump first time won you said that the political if i remember correctly sir and please correct me if i was wrong you said that uh, the, the political scientists should have now changed the theories and definition of those terminologies they usually use in the political science so say something on that please so exactly now you remember exactly that and if you remember that was 2 years ago and, and that's and the good thing about being in academia is that the, 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 the question we are talking about is the most important debate uh and and suddenly you know our our our, our theories our words our our basic structures of how we understood politics are crumbling before us and for for those who study this this is a very interesting time because you are then trying to figure out what is has changed and how how stable is that and the question really is ki is this is this a blip something that just happened and will go away is this what we are saying a perfect storm that it just happened that all these things happened together but it just happened that way and again it will go away or is this the new uh, the new reality uh, i am 2 years ago if you ask me i would have said i don't know today i think it is in fact a manifestation of a new reality now that doesn't mean that simply saying that i am not the old politician will make you win but i do think that saying that i am the old politician will not make you think that right and the charges against this this crowd will be that now you are the old politician the fact is you mentioned pakistan and pakistan a very part of the really large part of the imran khan appeal was in fact that there were two parties that were seemingly dynastic a very large part of mr modi's appeal is in fact that he was running against the gandhi uh, nehru family uh, a very large part of mr trump's appeal was in fact that uh, he was running against someone called clinton now you would say well the, the one dynasty politician who i just mentioned was trudeau because uh, his, his, his father used father to father was actually one of the most popular, popular one of prime ministers prime ministers that canada had ever had Uh, back in the 60s but think about the current trudeau and how he came how he was able to with his colorful socks and dancing the bhangra be able to totally define himself as the candidate of change you know part of this is funny uh, this was a you will not hear it including in the us politics you you two are sitting in one of the place that has one of the largest concentration of really really bright people Right, very really, really thinking people, really powerful, rich, well, uh, successful people. I, I would, I would separate bright from thinking, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can be humble. Let me, let me. Yeah. No, no, I'm not being humble. That's another discussion. <laughs> uh, let, let me play to the gallery. But 
what is the political slogan that even in Silicon Valley sells? Which is amazing to me. Someone Disruption. comes and says, I have not done this thing before, therefore vote for me. I mm -hmm. will bring a fresh air. And I keep thinking and saying, well, that is like saying, I have a heart problem, but I need surgery, therefore I'm going to go to a club. <laughs> well, Pakistan, we've, in Pakistan, we've done that forever, right? It sells even for really bright people that we will somehow take the world's most difficult job and the best argument someone can take, give me to take that job is that they've never done anything like it before. So when, some businessman will come and say, mm, because I ran a company with seven people, which made some ridiculous amount of money, people. therefore I can do the world's most complicated job. And all of you will do a fundraiser for that person, right? And same was with Mr. Trump. So I'm partly joking, but I'm not joking because I think partly it is that we have seen that the previous system, the regular politics has not delivered. And partly I think it is that we have not always recognized and been thankful for the muddleness of the, the fact that it does deliver. The mail does come on time. So in some ways, our own, uh, our own desire for perfect solutions made us turn politics into a bad thing. I have a feeling we will live to regret that. I think we will live to regret the fact that we took politicians that weren't perfect, that had lots of problems, but we made such a sport of trying to think that we could sit here and find faults with them. That the system crumbled, and as we say in Punjabi, Unveko. Ah, well, uh, again, the, the other, the, the Pakistani saying going through my head nowadays, keeps coming up, is the whole thing about Gandaria. Oh, or Chupo Gandaria. So, anyway, so, uh, in closing, uh, Ms. Basab, uh, find us a, uh, some hope, and I think I'm, I'm going to ask both of you now, with your PhDs, <laughs> as uh, Farah was saying in, in, in uh, Urdu show, uh, where is the hope? Uh, well, I mean, actually, change and hope. Uh, actually, first let me make a short comment on your comment. Go ahead. You know, like, uh, please do not put me in parallel with Dr. Najam. We are yes. here to uh, you learn from him. Fields. We I, are am, fields. Uh, I am nobody and uh, I just learned from him. And so we all have our strengths. <laughs> this, this, uh, this is where you got into But, but I'm very honored that you may you, you raise my <laughs> level so high. So um, uh, uh, basically, uh, I would rather ask Dr. Najam that, uh, sir, uh, uh, look at what is happening. In, uh, uh, let's... Let us talk about India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan at this okay, time. Okay, that is FPAC. Yeah, FPAC basically. Uh, what is happening in Afghanistan is, you know, like uh, Mr. Trump pulled back, and then uh, after that, uh, now there's some sort of talk start again. But uh, from my point of view, I don't see any hope there, anyways. I mean, Taliban's are not going to give up all those things. What they are, they have been fighting for for so many years you know how you see this uh, this whole thing and where it is going to go and what will be the quote-unquote uh, hopeful situation for the whole region uh, you know vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, India Pakistan and Afghanistan so at least in the short term and by the short term I mean next multiple two three years uh, I don't, I think you're right. I, I, I do not see things getting too much better. They will change, but not get better. Uh, I think you have an American president who is bent on removing his forces or a lot of the U.S. forces from Afghanistan. He will do that. And then Afghanistan, as it has historically, will again suffer. So I grew up when the Soviets were there, and then I saw the Soviets leave, and in some ways, you know, I keep looking at what's happening and saying, yeah, ye film to the film we dekhi hai. we've seen this before. Right? And I think that is the parallel that we are talking about, that there will be uh, unrest of a different type. Uh, at least for Pakistan, my, my hope and prayer is that Pakistan can shield itself from at least some of them, and certainly not become a party. Uh, and, and, and that is the issue. Uh, same goes for the region and I think for the world. In terms of our previous discussion, uh, is there hope? I think there is always hope. I think we are not a fully evolved species, but we are still a fairly smart species. 
we take our time in learning but we eventually come to a new normal and new normal will come but i do think that we will see more chaos more anarchy more turmoil before we see more calm and uh, again we haven't even talked about the technology some of it is about about technology some of it is about voice and how voice gets transmitted by the individual right and therefore how how large opinions are no longer institutional as much as they are cumulatively individual but for all of those reasons i think we are in a process of sort of turmoil and it will settle into a new system i think it will be a new system uh that doesn't mean it will be a non democratic or a, something different from democracy but i do think that the face and shape of democracy across the world uh will change unfortunately i see turmoil uh in the mix because again you live in the city of change every change brings with it turmoil and before before it becomes calm you know you guys use this word which i have never liked Uh, somehow everyone loves this word uh, and from the beginning i want this thought don't please don't talk to me about disruption <laughs> there is nothing good about disruption well maybe there is after disruption but at that point that means people losing their jobs at that point that means turmoil so what has been happening in the tech world you know when all of you were dancing with disruption because uber came <laughs> well think of what happened to the taxi drivers That's true. and that mm-hmm. is what's happening to the world i don't know what the uber of the world will be but meanwhile if you are a taxi driver and we are all taxi drivers this just fasten your seat so recently i in our book club dr saab we had uh, read one of the book which name is the creative destruction of medical sciences and very similar thing they are saying that the new technology will kind of reduce the space for the human doctors the human doctors will be there for mm. sure and it is a big argument in the book it's a very very good book and i remember in the during the book club there are a uh, lot of uh, doctors there and lot of engineers there and it was kind of uh, argument and this same argument came which you very rightly raised here uh, that what will happen to them it is countries now right so think about if the disruption that you were talking about the medical field or i was talking about uh, taxis now think of that sort of a disruption happening in the global system global system right? that's correct so what is disruption disruption is there's a system and it blows up that's true well it. yeah the new system comes in right you can't get a uber without messing with a lot of cab drivers well i i think you can't get a new global system without messing with the old one Well I I think we should stop the discussion here and we'll come back to this no I I'm doing saying this for time reasons and that is why I did not earlier challenge your statement about bright and thinking I I did not say that lightly there are a lot of very bright people in silicon valley where I don't think they are I, using their I kind of thinking. agree with right? uh, Sabat so on that thinking and brightness are not necessarily the same thing first of all secondly there are a few of us in silicon valley that have always had this this can I think in my view the problem is that we have separated discussions of disruption in technology and life from discussions of how society should be structured and all of that and we've kept them separate for so long that now that they are coming back into engagement it is a very tectonic kind of clash and that's kind of the problem there have been as you know uh, doc sab over the years we've had this discussion that there is there is a problem here i mean uh, those of us who went to grad school to study the interaction of technology and society has always had that problem we've had long arguments in engineering schools and, and which is why i have i found it very hard to join any of the book clubs in the <laughs> in silicon valley anyway so audience you've heard uh, this discussion we've been wanting to get uh, deeper and wider with some of our discussions here and look past the noise and fury of the immediate uh, headlines so to speak So uh, we look forward to having an op- some of the discussions we've opened here, which we can't continue right now. Also, need quite a bit of discussion. I'd be interested to see what the audience has to say. You can reach us on our YouTube channel, Facebook, Talk for Park, or you can from overseas, and then our immediate Twitter accounts. Adil Najam. I don't believe Adil Saab is very active on Twitter. He say we hear from him, but he doesn't engage as much. and i guess that's kind of uh, the secret of his sanity if i if i may say that <laughs> uh, <laughs> the rest of us are left you know chasing that uh, what in pakistan we call trucky batti 
you know, the, the light behind the truck that we run around. Uh, uh, of course, sometimes, once in a while, the American expression is, uh, you know, catching the, the dog that caught the, uh, the car then becomes a problem. Anyway, so uh, we'll see you next time. In the meantime, you can reach us at iFaqeer, at Mizbah Azam, Adil Najam Sahib. And then, of course, Talk for Park and Viewpoint from Overseas. Catch us on YouTube, catch us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Let's continue this conversation. In the meantime, till next time, Allah Nigaban.